this is a vision of the end, the end of Game of Thrones. This Sunday, it's the very final episode of HBO's blockbuster fantasy series. We'll find out who will finally sit on the Iron Throne, or if there's anyone left who even wants it. And even if you're not a fan of the show, you probably know someone who is. You're probably living with someone. You're probably working next to someone. We are everywhere. So you know this is a huge TV event, and that's why we've put together our very own Game of Thrones super panel to talk about what is sure to be an epic finale. Eli is back. We've also got Deanna Sumanak johnson and CBC Radio's arts reporter Amanda Paris is joining us. And we want to reassure everyone we will do our best to offer no spoilers from this season. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's, oh, wow. You get banished, okay? Wow. Your face gets blocked with that boom boom, this and then you're off. Now come out of the, <laughs> exactly. the exactly. ceiling. So it's super hard, I know, guys, to talk about the impact of the show, particularly how relevant this season is. But let's try to leave out this season and talk about the broader aspects. So, Amanda, I'd like to begin with you. For those, unbelievably, who don't watch the show, <laughs> right. it's a show about fantasy queens and dragons and mystery and mayhem, and it's so fantastical. Why do you think it's resonated with so many people? Well, because it's not just a fantasy story. It's a story about power. It's a story about governance. It's a story about betrayal and redemption and all of these things that are part of the best dramas that we've always loved, except we're doing it in this time period that it's inspired by medieval England. It has these fantasy elements, incredible performances, a production value unlike any television show we've ever seen. So it's almost like you go to the movies every single week. Um, and so there, are so there are a multiplicity of reasons why it's become so popular, but mostly it's because it's these stories and this in some cases, really great writing, maybe not this season, really great <laughs> writing um, that has led us to fall in love and be so deeply invested in who is going to occupy the Iron Throne at the end and of the And those this. heroes and villains, like, they don't stay in their box, right? No, like, no. They, you, you start to think, oh, that's the bad person. That's the good. And then they morph, they change. And yeah. so it's that multiplicity. It's that ability to grow and evolve. And the, you began thinking, okay, there's, there's the evil queen, et cetera. And then Everyone it's subverted. Has other facts. Exactly. It's subverted all of so our So you fall in love with these characters, but you mentioned the production value that mm -hmm. you're really watching a movie every single weekend. Yeah. What has been the cost of this? What has <laughs> what has this done? What for has people? not been the yeah. cost of this? Yeah, really. What do you think, Eli? It has raised the bar in terms of what you can do in on television for a prestige series. Uh, you're looking at the final season budgets around like 15 million dollars per episode. So they are taking cinematic approach, cinematic special effects, the kind of you know the, you think of the the dragon actions, those massive battle scenes. You used to have to go to movie theater to see that kind of action. Mm. They actually went to special effects. Companies Companies, visual effects companies, many of them Canadians, said, we want to bring cinema-style battle to the small screen. It hadn't been done before because series hadn't been that expensive. So HBO and Game of Thrones really raised the bar, but also in terms of storytelling. And I think the other reason, the magic of Game of Thrones, they took their time, right? Mm. They shot a pilot. It didn't work. They recast the pilot. Many of the key mm. yeah. people, Kathleen mm. Stark, played by a different actress than Michelle Fairley, which yeah. is like, pfft, yeah, pfft, blows your mind. And I think Daenerys Targaryen yes, was yes, Daenerys that's was right. recast. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about this. You have such a phenomenal show, the production value, these characters that we've all fallen in love with. And you know, it's sort of like Sopranos. Mm. Well, well, how do you beat a show like Sopranos? And then comes Breaking Bad. Then there are so many others. What would it take to beat something like the Game of Thrones, Deanna? I, I think that the HBO is asking itself the very same question. I mean, I'm wondering about how many people got HBO subscriptions just to watch the show. So we know that there's a number of prequels in the works. You will not be seeing any of the actors and characters that you love because it takes place actually hundreds or thousands of years before the kingdoms that mm -hmm. we got to know. So if you love George R.R. R. Martin world, this is for you, for sure. However, uh, whether this will have that kind of... There's a lot of talk about this might be the end of monoculture. Mm. That if you grew up in the 80s or early 90s, as I think a lot of us did when we were little kids, maybe not a man, <laughs> yes, no, yeah, younger, I'm included. Um, <laughs> that there were things like uh, Star Wars, or in my case, I was like the Indiana Jones girl, or even like the Goonies, where like you would go and watch something, and the next week in your school, all the kids would talk about it. This is it now, uh, except we're grown-ups. And I mean, as Eli can attest in our unit, every <laughs> Monday starts with completely spoilerific discussion of what <laughs> we all did the night before. And we now, many of us, you know, have children and families and jobs. And, and we, you really have that same enthusiasm and, and, and zest and passion and arguments with your friends like you did when you were eight or nine. And I think there's something actually very sweet and very evocative about it for us. 
I don't know if HBO yeah. or anyone else will be able to achieve that. We won't that. all be watching it at the yeah. same time. In exactly. this right. time-shifted DVR world, who knows when, when we'll be consuming. When you can watch when you want right. to watch exactly. and who exactly. will create something that makes you feel so urgently right. that you need to exactly. watch it at that time. Yeah. So let's talk about the show itself. And again, we're going to try, because I'm not up to date, so these guys will be in big trouble if they give away too much. But it's Amanda... because you're usually very I know, good. I know, I've been under the weather, haven't been able to get over to the parents who have the HBO. Anyway, anyway, anyway. <laughs> um, Amanda, so let's talk about how amazingly popular it's been, yes, but this season has seen a lot of criticism from avid, avid fans. It has. What's your take? Well, to go back to something Eli said, they took their time in the past, and mm. now they are rushing. And so it feels like the creator <laughs> said, we are done with this, we need this many episodes to wrap everything up. We know what the end is. How do we get to the end? And so I feel like a lot of people are feeling as though the characters that they invested in, the storylines they invested in, the things that they put up as teasers are not being fulfilled. Mm. Or if they're being fulfilled, they're not, not being fulfilled time. properly. So the characters are becoming not true to the, to the setups that we've seen for them for years. Um, they are doing things that make no sense. Or like a little mythologies, little prophecies yes. where you're like, what happened to yeah. that? Yeah. 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 Full storylines like being things dropped. are missing, right? Yeah. Things are completely a missing. A scene will begin and you'll be like, <laughs> How, why are we there? What yeah, happened? Yeah. What? Oh Lots no! Of steps in between, you know? missing. Still visually spectacular. Yeah. Still sure, all of yeah. that production value. But the thing that we fell in love with was was the story and the characters. That feels like it has been dropped. And so there are thousands of people that have signed See, the petition. See, I, I think I've got, <laughs> I know. I've got, I know that petition where everyone's like, "Oh, remake it." Okay. Are you guys crazy? Remake, remake it. The like, final season. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> must have gone into this season with rose-colored glasses because I'm, I'm a, such a huge mm. fan and I love the characters that I love that I was like, this is great. Every Monday, oh, this is great. And every Monday, some colleague is like, are you crazy? This is terrible. It's, yeah. not, it's not living up to what it was. So what do you think? Is this... Why did this not work, apparently? Well, I mean, as Amanda said, look, the, the showrunners, they've announced their next thing, the other world of fantasy, is Star Wars. Right. And I think they're tired <laughs> of knights and dragons, and I think they're looking at droids and battleships and whatnot. They pick and I up think, those. and yeah. so instead, like, if you would have taken, so they could have easily done 12 new episodes instead of like yeah. five or six. And so it really is a disservice to the mm -hmm. fans as they are looking at like the new race. And so they're rushing to this finish line and it, it short changes us and it short changes the audience that has invested so many years also, in Also slightly in their defense, I don't think they ever thought that they would have to create the story. They thought right. George R. R. Right. Martin would have with, finished the novels and, by now and, and that also, they could continue also to be in their, in their defense, I, I, like, I'm more like where Natasha stands. I've definitely not been, I, I don't love it as much as I have in the past. I'm not as disappointed as some people have been. George R.R. R. Martin okayed this ending, whatever it is. So years ago, just like they had to, uh, apparently the question that they had to answer to even get to do this show was, who are Jon Snow's parents? Which we know is right. one of the crucial uh, questions here. One of the other questions that George R.R. R. Martin put to them, once he kind of, once they went off the books, as we call it, uh, is what's the resolution? And they ran it by him and he said, I'm good with that. So it's not so outside of the world that he envisioned. The resolution. Okay. Yeah, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Just because we're running out of time and I need lightning <laughs> round. Just who would you like to see sit on the Iron Throne? Go. Uh, Sansa because uh, tall girl power. Uh, not really. <laughs> uh, Sansa Stark because she's evolved. She's been through uh, hell and back and she is a pragmatic, sensible ruler that I think George R.R. Martin likes. Less flashy, but she's learned a heck of a lot. I think she's earned it. What do you got, Eli? Tyrion. Little guy's been largely ineffective. It's time for him to <laughs> actually do something uh, and use that big brain again. I love uh, Tyrion. He's my guy. I don't care who sits on the throne. I just want Tyrion to find love and find peace. Okay, Amanda, you. No throne. They get away with this whole mm -hmm. system and they become a republic. Whoa! Of Gladiator. I, I think that might be it. <laughs> well, we'll all find out on Sunday and we'll all be crying, I think, come Monday morning because oh, our friends it's are over. going away. Oh, oh no. anyway, thank you, you friends, for joining us. We've got Eli Glasner, Deanna Sumanak, Johnson, Amanda Paris, and all of you eagerly waiting for Sunday night. <laughs> thank you, Natasha. Thank you, guys.